Okay, I am blithely talking about evidence, and we have not uh, defined what evidence is. Well, to a certain extent, I suppose uh, I have uh, talked about the fact that it's the facts that support uh, the story that you want to tell, your position as to what actually happened uh, in the case, whatever case it is. Um, you know, who did what, what they did, um, how they did it, uh, sometimes being supported or certain evidence uh, will support uh, that. Um, uh, why, in terms of motive, uh, sometimes comes into it, uh, when it happened. Uh, you know, so, the girl, W5 plus H, um, but, uh, you know, it is, it is the facts. You know, it's the old dragnet thing, just the facts, ma'am. Um, because it's not necessarily just, you know, microscopic traces of DNA or hairs or fibers or blood spatter, all the, all those types of things. Um, in fact, witness testimony is evidence. And that is why witnesses are primarily witnesses of fact. They are saying the facts what they saw, what they heard. And, you know, that is considered to be a fact unless somebody else from the other side comes up with uh, other testimony that says, no, I saw this or I heard that, which contradicts what this other person says. And then you have to start uh, either gathering other supporting evidence as to why one side's testimony or the other's is uh, impossible or uh, uh, start, uh, and this is much more difficult, uh, figuring out uh, who is the more reliable witness, you know, which story is more consistent, uh, all that type of stuff. So, Witness testimony is evidence, um, and and it is hard to uh, define in hard and fast terms. You know what what is evidence and what is not evidence. But there are rules of evidence. Now, um, once again, um, the rules, the specific rules of evidence, are going to vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Um, but they are uh, generally going to follow similar patterns in, in terms of the principles followed. So um, we'll go through uh, some of them here. First of all, the evidence has to be legally permissible. And this um, primarily turns on how did you obtain this evidence? Um, did you obtain it legally? And if you have evidence, um, but you didn't obtain the evidence legally, uh, then no, that's, that's not evidence. That's not acceptable. And so we do have um, things like search and seizure, rules for search and seizure. Um, you have to have uh, probable cause, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, if uh, you uh, um, have an employee and you're pretty sure that the employee is doing uh, something wrong and you uh, um, you know, he's walking in and out of the building every day. You suspect he's stealing from. So one day you stop him, and just on spec, uh, 
you know, look in his briefcase and you find one of your laptops. And, uh, so, you know, I'll say that he's a thief. Uh, you dismiss him. He sues for wrongful dismissal. You bring the laptop into court as evidence. And, uh, you know, judge or the other guy's lawyer says, you know, how did you get that? Well, we, you know, researched his briefcase. Did you have any reason to? Well, we suspect, no, that's not good enough. Um, and you, sometimes you have a situation where, you know, even though he stole your laptop and you, uh, you know, seized it as evidence because you did it wrong, not only are you, you know, on the hook for the wrongful dismissal, but you also have to give the laptop back because you seized it illegally. Um, you know, <laughs> that can, that can frost you a bit. Anyways, um, the, uh, so we have, uh, these rules about, um, you know, what, what is legal, how, how you can obtain evidence, um, you know, we talked about privacy issues, um, had a little story there, um, so, um, there's that. Now the next thing is, it's got to be relevant. And that, for us technical people, um, this is the big one. Because we, you know, collect all kinds of evidence. At least what we think is evidence. Um, you know, we've got data and, and log files and etc, etc, etc. And the thing is, no, we can't use most of that stuff. Because it's not relevant to the specific charge that we are trying to support. So, um, it's got to be relevant. Um, there is uh, uh, this principle called best evidence. Now, I'm, I am not sure how uh, common this is. It's, it's usually the case in common law, um, but it may not be in all civil law situations. That you can't just, you know, l layer on a whole ton of evidence... Um, you've got to have uh, the best evidence that best supports your specific case that you are making. And the um, uh, my court case story, again, I had, you know, dozens of programs that could have been used uh, as evidence to support the case. But, you know, they only wanted one you're limited. You're limited in time as to what you can present. And, of course, my evidence um, had to then be supported by uh, the ex expert witnesses. Um, I was the witness of... Uh, the, yeah, the witness of fact. They were the expert witnesses. Um, the fact that they were all my friends and we had worked together for years on, and on many similar cases um, and nobody had a problem with that uh, it's just one of the uh, interesting features of the American justice system but uh, we'll leave that because that's not relevant right now but we will talk about expert witnesses later um, it's got to be complete it, it makes the case um, it has to be accurate and there has to be a foundation of admissibility and we will talk about that next time